In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple Salesforce flow that will create a case and then allow your customers to pay you via a secure payment link. My name is Stacy, and I'm from Chargent. If you are a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, then you are in the right place. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to use Flow to allow your Salesforce users to create a new case and send a payment request to your customer. This would be a common flow for using Salesforce in a customer service call center where your customers might need replacement parts that are out of warranty or wish to order supplies during a service call. Flow is an application inside Salesforce that lets you automate business processes, collecting data, and then doing something with that data. Flow Builder is the interface you use to create flows and it is very powerful and pretty cool. Let's dig in. Step one, a new flow. To get started, head to the Salesforce setup screen and type flows in the quick find box. From the flows setup screen, click new flow. You will see several options. For our example, we'll be using a screen flow. Choose auto layout to continue. Step two, add the record ID. You will need to create a variable to capture the ID of the record starting the flow. In the toolbox, click new resource. You will use a resource type of variable. Be sure to give it an API name of record ID and a data type of text. Be sure and select available for input as this ID is originating from outside the flow. Now click done. And by the way, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the description below. Step three, get the opportunity. Next, we will need to get the record details for our opportunity object. Click the plus sign and add the get records element. Let's give it a name of get opportunity and then hit tab to autocomplete the API name. Enter a description and then select the opportunity object. We don't want all opportunity records, so let's filter the records using the record ID variable we created before. We only want to store the first record returned and let's have Salesforce automatically store all fields. Step four, save work. It is always a good idea to save our work, so let's click the Save button and give our flow a name. Click Save when you're done filling in the details. You will want to continue saving the flow throughout the building process. Step five, the Case Details screen. Next, we will add our first screen element. We will need to give our screen a label and API name. Then we will add a text screen component for our case subject and a long text area screen component for our case description. Just enter subject and description for the label and API names. We will also add a toggle so users can let the flow know if replacement items are needed. We are finished creating our first screen, so click done. Step six, the decision element. Next, we will add a decision element that uses the toggle we just created. Once the decision element has a label and API name, we can complete the outcome order section. We will need to give our outcome label a name. Let's use yes and click the tab key to fill in the API name. We will leave the condition requirement pick list as is and enter our criteria. In this case, when the input toggle value equals true, if you'd like, you can rename the default outcome to no. Step seven, explain next steps. The flow logic now splits depending on the value of the toggle we created. If the user selects yes, we will want to collect some payment request details, then create the order and payment request, then finally create the new case. If they selected no, they can skip directly to creating the new case. Step eight, the payment screen. Next, we will add a screen in the yes node of the flow. We will want to add an email screen component and a currency screen component so we can verify the user's email address and enter the charge amount needed to create our charge and order and payment request. When adding the email component, we can pre-populate it by adding the opportunity billing contact to the value field. Step nine, create the order. Now that we have the necessary information, let's create our charge and order. Add the create records element and let's select use separate resources and literal values. Enter charge and order in the object field. We will now set field values for the charge and order. The charge and order's billing email and subtotal will come from the screen we just made. We will also add the charge and order's billing first name and last name from the billing contact record. For the gateway, we will need the gateway ID and we will want to relate the record to our opportunity using the record ID variable. 
Step 10, create payment request. Next, we will create the payment request record and set field values for the payment request. First, let's add the related order and opportunity. We can use the ID of the create order element and record ID of the opportunity. We will then add the email address and set the send payment request email value to true. Lastly, we will set the payment request transaction type to charge full amount and add a quick note to the record. Step 11, create case. Finally, we will create our new case where the criteria nodes meet backup and the create record element and set the account ID, subject, and description, and then click done. Step 12, activate. Now that the flow is created, we will activate it and add a button to launch the flow. Head over to the opportunity object in the object manager and click on buttons, links, and actions. We will create an action from our flow and the button to the opportunity page layout. Step 13. Try it out. That was a lot of steps. Now let's try it out. Head to an opportunity page and click the create case button. Enter your case details and activate the toggle. Now we will confirm the user's email address and enter the charge amount for the charge and order. Click next to finish and we're all done. The flow has created a charge and order, created and emailed a payment request and created a new case. And now check out this next video where you can learn how to take payments on any object in Salesforce. My name is Stacy, and at Chargent, we're dedicated to helping Salesforce customers like you keep your payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help.